So you want to record yourself for YouTube videos, but you don't have a webcam. And you also don't have $500 to spend on a DSLR and a capture card? Tough luck. Okay, okay. For real this time. So we don't have a webcam. Nor do we have a camera. But most likely, you do have a smartphone. And what do smartphones have? Smartphones have cameras. So all we need to do is to find a way to connect the video feed from your smartphone to something like OBS. Luckily, there are plenty of options out there for both Android and iOS. There's Erion, iVCam, iCam, Elgato ScreenLink, Android Cam, amongst many others. While each one has its distinct advantages, most of the versions that actually matter will run us around 10 euros. Except for DroidCam. DroidCam Pro costs you about 5 euros. I've chosen DroidCam because it's one of the most reliable of all the apps out there. I've experienced close to no issues with it, and it's available for both iOS and Android devices. Unfortunately, DroidCam does not work for any Mac devices. But I'll share an alternative at the end of this video for all our Apple brothers and sisters. I also quickly want to say that I'm in no way affiliated, sponsored or anything to do this video. I've just had an all around good experience with this app and use it on a daily basis. Investing the 5 euros in the pro version is necessary if you wish to. Zoom in or out. Use the autofocus. Activate the flashlight on your phone remotely. Flip the camera. And stream in 720p, which is basically HD. The ladder has to be set up manually, which also requires a restart of your computer for whatever reason, but I'll leave that purchase choice up to you. To get started, all we have to do is download the software on our PC and the app on our mobile device. For reference, I'm using an iPhone 7 and I've purchased a Pro or HD pack. Open DroidCam on both devices, enter the IP as shown on your mobile device into the computer version and hit start. This will connect your phone to your PC via Wi-Fi and turn it into an IP cam. The people at Dev47 apps are really smart though, and also included an option for people like me who have a painfully slow network connection. Connect your mobile device to your PC via USB. When connected, press the USB icon in the DroidCam software hit the refresh button and click start. Now one of two things will happen. One, you get a video feed and all is good, you can start. Two, it can't connect. If scenario two happens, it just didn't sync well and restarting either the app or the PC software should eliminate the issue. This is the only issue I've found so far. Now there are also a bunch of hidden features that are not available via the PC client so you will need to open the settings on the app to gain access to those. These settings include limiting the FPS, continuous autofocus, auto dim, and a selection of cameras the app can use to give a wider field of view or a more focused camera. I'll leave this up to personal preference as there's no real reason for me to recommend any settings here except for locking the FPS for the most stable video feed possible. With the initial setup done, we can move over to OBS. Do keep the connection up though, as we need the feed to edit some of the settings. In OBS, go to any scene you want to add a webcam to and add a source. Add a video capture device and add DroidCam as your video source. There are a lot of settings here we could change, but leave it as is and click on OK. Now most likely you have some empty edges and we need to make it either full screen or small enough to fit a gameplay or a review etc screen. To make the feed full screen, select the source and press Ctrl F. To resize it properly, hold Shift and drag the corner rectangle until you're content with how it looks. Now we can make this look a lot better with some corrections. Right click the video source and open the filters section. Click the plus icon and add a color correction. Depending on your lighting and room, I would suggest playing around with the contrast, brightness and saturation to get a good look. I don't say this a lot, but in this case, less is more, just keep that in mind. You can also add this webcam source into your webcam overlay scene the same way. If you're interested in how to make a simple and clean animated webcam overlay in DaVinci Resolve, click the link at the top right of your screen. 
All there's left to do is finding a good spot for your smartphone webcam to sit or to mount it on a tripod. I've got a link to the one I use in the description box below. Mac users, I've heard you sobbing in the corner, so here's your alternative. Epoch Cam. Yes, this is a more expensive app. It'll run you around 9 to 10 euros, but it's one of the best and most reliable apps out there and even runs at higher resolutions. Setup is quite similar and there are tons of videos out there for more in-depth reviews on this app. We can now start recording with the camera and make more engaging content. Next week, we will start recording footage, a voiceover, I'll show you how to sync it and edit it in DaVinci Resolve. If you want to get notified for that video, click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Tell me in the comment section what app you chose and share your experience. Also, if you want to discuss stuff on DaVinci Resolve, editing in general, gaming and lots of other stuff, like music, join my Discord. I've added the link in the description box below. And I'll see you next week. Later!